And hello everyone and welcome to Victory Update for Wednesday, September 2nd. 2020. My name is Tim Fox. It is great to have you with us. However you're watching us on Roku, uh, on Dish Network, or on direct television, wherever and however you're watching, we are glad you're here. Hey, this program today, you're going to be blessed because our guest is not only going to speak to us today, but he's also going to minister to us in music. So you'll want to stick around for what we have in this next half hour. Uh, and my guest, well, not my guest, but my co-host today is Stephen Shelton. How are you today? Excellent, sir. How are you? I am good. Well, you're kind of a guest and you're not on the program very often. Yeah, but I always enjoy my time with you. Always <laughs> an honor to be in the pleasure of the greatness that is Tim Fox. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to pull out the wallet and pay him for yeah, that. That's, yeah, pay up an offering. Hey, we have a product this week, uh, Stephen. It's called Sensitivity of how do people Absolutely. get that? Absolutely. I'm excited about this. This is one of my favorite messages. When I first came on staff here several years ago, this is one of the first messages I found in the bookstore down at EMIC. And I listened to this. It has been in my car for years now. And so I'm excited that we are going to make this available. Sensitivity of Heart. It's two messages and it is absolutely free. It's a digital download. So you go to govictory.com slash victory update. This is one you will want to listen to over and over and over again. I promise it's worth it. And it's absolutely free. So there's no reason not to go download right now. GoVictory.com slash victory update. You'll be glad you did. Amen. No expense, no excuse. We, uh, Brother Keith Moore uh, came up with that and we've all used it so many times. We almost can say that we all said it, but he, he gets credit for it. Now, one of the things that we love to do here at KCM is to pray and agree with you. And also we like to hear your testimonies. We have our partner service center where our prayer ministers are. And also down there right now is our own Kurt Shellstrom. Kurt. Hey, good afternoon, Tim. We are here in the Partner Services Center today and uh, the phones are ringing and the, it's, bu it's busy down here. People are calling in and we're so grateful and honored to be able to come in agreement with our partners and friends from all over the world and to pray with them today. And if you have haven't called in yet uh, or don't have the number, we want to encourage you. It's on the screen, 877-281-6297. For all of you that are watching on the Victory Channel Facebook page right now, you're welcome to put your prayer request in there as well. Elaine called in today and uh, from Lindale, Texas, and uh, she said, She's healed. And uh, you know, that's the power of agreement. Our par prayer partners, uh, uh, ministers behind us here, praying in agreement for healing and whatever you need prayer for, we wanna encourage you to call today, 877-281-6297. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. Once again, that number, 877-281-6297. We're here to agree with you. You know, we, we can be your two. Uh, Jesse Duplantis talks about being the, being your two, and where two or more are gathered, we'll be your two, and we'll agree with you. you. Know now it's time in our program to hear what's going on uh, in the news with Mike Garofalo and Mike. The president took a look at some of the destruction in Wisconsin firsthand yesterday. He did, Tim. President Trump visited Kenosha on Tuesday and blamed the violence there in recent days on domestic terrorism. Shortly after arriving in the city, the president toured the charred remains of a block destroyed by violence and fire. So I'm committed to helping Kenosha rebuild. We all are. Uh, we will provide $1 million to the Kenosha law enforcement so that you have some extra money to go out and do what you have to do. You took a rough, it was a rough week, to put it mildly, and uh, you've done it incredibly well. I'm also providing nearly $4 million to support the small businesses that I talked about today that got burned up, burned down. In addition, President Trump said the federal government will provide $42 million to help support public safety statewide. He did not meet with the family of Jacob Blake, whose shooting by police on August 23rd set off the violence there. President Trump offered to, but decided against it when the family insisted on having a lawyer present. While in Kenosha, the president was asked if he thought there was systemic racism in police departments across the country. I don't what believe that. No, I don't believe that. I think the police do an incredible job. And I think you do have some bad apples. I think you'd agree every once in a while you'll see something. And, and you do have the other situation, too, where they're under this tremendous pressure and they, they don't handle it well. 
New jobs numbers are out for August. The report from Moody's and ADP shows the U.S. economy added 428,000 jobs last month. According to UPI, more than half were created by large businesses with 129,000 in leisure and hospitality and 100,000 jobs created in education and healthcare. The private assessment is released each month, two days before the government jobs report. If you're one of the nation's 43 million renters who qualify for direct payments under the CARES Act, listen up. A temporary moratorium on evictions that will last through the end of the year goes into effect on Friday. The White House made the announcement on Tuesday. As a result of an executive order from the president, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is using its authority to impose that moratorium. It applies to renters who make no more than $99,000 a year and couples making no more than $198,000 a year. Some welcome news for President Trump when it comes to polls. According to Real Clear Politics, polls just released yesterday show the president with a seven-point lead over Joe Biden in Georgia and a two-point lead in North Carolina. In addition, an Emerson poll showed the president's job approval rating to be at 49 percent, with 47 percent saying they disapprove. However, a new national poll by USA Today just released today shows Joe Biden leading President Trump by seven points. 48 to 41. With the postponement of the NBA playoffs, many of the arenas used by teams are now being secured as polling sites for the November general election. The Barclays Center in Brooklyn is one of those. On Tuesday, officials announced the arena where the Brooklyn Nets play will be included in the city's plan to provide residents with as many safe and open polling sites as possible. Other NBA arenas to be used as polling sites include those in Atlanta, Detroit, Charlotte, Houston, along with Madison Square Garden in New York. The Barclays Center will be open for early voting from October 24th through November 1st and then again on Election Day. If you are Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, some COVID-19 rules in Northern California apparently don't apply to you. According to Fox News, Speaker visited a San Francisco hair salon for a wash and blow dry on Monday. The only problem, salons there have been ordered to remain closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. In footage obtained by Fox on Monday afternoon around 3 p.m., Pelosi is seen walking through the salon with wet hair and no mask. Salons in San Francisco have been closed since March and were only allowed to reopen on Tuesday, however, just for outdoor hairstyling. A Pelosi spokesperson said the speaker was under the impression she was following the rules. Days after Democrat presidential nominee Joe Biden told ABC News he would shut down the country again to prevent the spreading of the coronavirus, if scientists told him to, the governor of Florida is looking at things much differently. Ron DeSantis, a Republican, told a Florida TV station this week that he will never shut the state down again. DeSantis added that the number of COVID-19 patients hospitalized is down to 60% from the July statewide peak. The governor said he cringed when he heard Joe Biden's comment about a possible nationwide shutdown. Mayor Bill de Blasio says New York City is delaying sending students back to classrooms in the nation's largest public school system. De Blasio said Tuesday that the instruction that was supposed to begin on September 10th will be delayed until September 16th to allow extra prep time for teachers. All students will spend the first few days learning from home by computer before in-person instruction begins for some students on September 21st. The United States has decided to go it alone when it comes to developing a coronavirus vaccine. The White House says it will pass on a global effort being led by the World Health Organization. According to the report in The Hill, almost every nation in the world is taking part in the initial talks about a joint COVAX project. First, it was normalization of relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Now more good news for Israel. Saudi Arabia says it will allow its airspace to be used for flights from Israel to the UAE. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the new flight path will open Israel up to Asia and the east with a more direct route. Back to you in the Victory Studio. All right, Mike, thank you very much. You know, one of the common themes throughout that news break today was the fact that our leaders need our prayers. Yeah. Uh, if you've never prayed, the Bible says we should pray for those in authority. Pray for our leaders. If you don't know how to do that, I, let me just lead you really simple how to do that. Just say, Lord, bless the president. Lord, bless my governor. Bless my mayor. Give them wisdom, Father, in the situations they deal with every day. And Father, we just thank you that you are 
the Lord over this nation and that those folks will come to you and ask for your help in Jesus' name. It's really that simple. You don't have to pray some long prayer. Just pray for our leaders because, listen, if you and I were in that position to try to make some of the decisions they're trying to make, we would certainly want someone Absolutely. to be praying for us. So Absolutely. just pray for our leaders. Now, in our praise break today, we are really blessed to have Philip Renner with us and Jonathan Sandu with him to sing a song called Rest. Enjoy this song by Philip Renner. Your presence will go with me. You will give me rest. Your presence will go with me. You will give me rest. And you recover, Lord. Every single thing Your presence will go with me And you will give me rest In your mercy and your goodness You recover all that was lost you, Philip. He will give you rest. That's absolutely the truth. Praise God for that. Now, Philip will be joining us in just a few moments here on the set. But before we get to him, I do want to give you an update uh, from our disaster relief team who, as you know, uh, are down in Louisiana uh, in that area down there where Hurricane Laura hit. And we are down there ministering to and blessing our partners. So uh, let's go and show you someone else that has been blessed by you, the partners of KCM. I left the, when they said mandatory evacuation. You know, people think I'm crazy, but I believe God. 
and I stood out and claimed my Jeep was an old Jeep, but I said the storm would not touch it. It wouldn't do much property damage. I bind every spirit in the name of Jesus for even coming here. Because people are like, Gloria, you live by yourself. I said, baby, I'm not by myself. They say, what I say? I got angels encamped all around me. Ain't no little fat boo boo, but they big and tall, standing up, guard on each side of me. See, people have angels and they don't send them to do nothing. You gotta send them on assignment. It's what we speak and believe in our heart and we shall have it. And you can't look at what it look like because it's something to change at any minute. But just keep your faith and keep holding on and everything's gonna be all right. Just like it's gonna be all right, right here, right now. I learned from Kenneth Cup, believe you will receive. And that's what was in my heart, that it wasn't gonna be totally, completely down, that it would be salvageable, and it has been. And I give God all the honor, glory, and praise. It's everything to me. Honest to God, it is. And I thank you guys, and bless y'all families, and Kenneth and Copeland, Gloria Copeland, whole ministry, all the prayer partners that praise for us. And that's what it's all about. God is awesome all by himself. Oh, glory to God. He's an on-time God. God, thank you. You ready, my hands? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, bless you, guys. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, he is. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, amen. Did you hear what she said? God is good all by himself. He doesn't need help. He is so good. And the other thing he, she said was, with him, you are never alone. That is the gospel message right there in about 15 seconds of video. God is always good all by himself. And you are never alone when you have him in your heart and by your side. And our guest today, will tell you the very same thing because he's about to embark on something he never thought that he would do only because God said, do it. Philip Renner has been in full-time worship ministry since the age of 15. He is an award-winning recording artist, a songwriter, and a producer, as you just heard a moment ago. Philip served as the worship pastor for his father, Rick Renner, at the Moscow Good News Church. But now he and his family have moved back to America to bring us into the presence of God. And now... He's been called to do something that he never thought he'd do. He's been called to an event called Worship Without Limits over Chicago. This coming Saturday from 5 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central to 7 p.m. Central in Daly Plaza, Chicago, Illinois. Please help me welcome Philip Renner. And my goodness, what a blessing that God has said, Philip, I trust you to do this. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited what God is going to do. Saturday. Yeah. It is going to be powerful. Talk about when he said to you, I want you to do this. This is not something you were looking to do or thinking about. No, not <laughs> at all. I remember I was, I was at home and I was about to go to bed and the Lord said, go pray. You cannot go to bed right now. Mm. It is time for you to pray. And I just want to encourage everyone. If God tells you not to go to bed, but to spend time in prayer, that means that it's time to do it. Yes. And as I began to pray, it wasn't like this casual prayer. It was like you jumped straight into the river, straight into the deep end. And I noticed that I was wailing and I was crying. And my wife in the other room said, Philip, are you okay? I mean, what's going on with you? And I said, sweetie, I'm not quite sure, but I know that this is intercession. Mm. And right before I went to bed, I picked up my phone and I saw Chicago mm. and I saw the flames and I saw the chaos and I saw everything going on. And the Lord said to me, Philip, go sing over the city. And something that I've been really impacted by recently is I found out that Samuel's school of ministry, school of prophets, it wasn't just a school of prophets. It was a school of musicians. Mm. And they had the choice either to speak the word or to sing the word. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking to myself, you know, either sending the Levites into war is true or it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a spiritual, you know, lesson that we learned. What if it's actual reality well, in this time? Right. 
And just like when they sang, it caused confusion in the enemy's camp. Yeah. I believe that it's going to cause confusion in the enemy's camp in Chicago. So good. And the best days are yet to come Amen. for Chicago because oh. of the many, many people that have prayed and fasted and sought the Lord and gone before me. I take no credit for this yeah. because it's the people there that have been warring in the spirit. It's the people there that have had their churches even threatened. Yes. But worship shifts the atmosphere. Yeah. And I believe that as you worship, it's going to be worship without limits because God is going to do something that only he can do. Yes. Let me ask you, I'm sure leading up to this and praying for the event, uh, since the Lord put it on your heart, he's shown you some things and put some vision for what to expect. What's the Lord showing you about what, what's going to happen during this event? <laughs> Honestly, Stephen, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I believe, I believe I thought that, was a good question. that there is going to be power released. Uh, there's going to be a salvation call. There's going to be a call for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a call for people to be healed. Mm. And I did have a little practice before I did this. Okay. Because it's interesting how God calls you. You know, I heard about you know, you're supposed to go sing over a city. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to try it in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, right there in the center of downtown. There's a place called Guthrie Green. Mm -hmm. And I got my guitar and I just sang over the city for an hour. Wow. And I noticed how the atmosphere began to shift and change. And then I got to minister to people who were hearing it. And I thought to myself, this is powerful. And the next time I did it was during Southwest Believers Southwest Convention, Believers Convention yes. right there. And people gathered and they began to worship God. And there was someone who talked to me and said, Philip, I heard your voice three blocks away. Wow. <laughs> and I came for the sound because I heard it. And I think that's key because there is a sound of worship the people are going to be running toward. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I mean, people are going to hear the sound system and the drums and the guitar and you know, it's going to be very noticeable. <laughs> very <laughs> noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to it's going to cause some waves. Yeah. Amen. And I believe that yeah. non-believers are going to run yeah. to the sound of worship, yeah. to the sound of love. Praise God. And that perfect love is going to cast out fear wow. in that city. Now, since you've, in the name of Jesus. since you've committed to do this, there have been people contacting you. People have said, hey, I want to get involved with this. Talk a little bit about that and the unexpected blessing that is. I mean, it's been absolutely supernatural because... When I had this vision, it was like, how do I do this? I don't have the money to do this. And then the Lord was like, kind of smiling, hey, it's all right. <laughs> I got the money. I own all the cows, all the cattle. Hello. I got everything. Come so on. you can just chill and just watch how I will part the sea. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's what I've been seeing. And I've been seeing how God has just been faithful and it is going to be very, very powerful. Uh, you, you were sharing with me before the program. I said, when you told your dad, what did he say to you? <laughs> what did he say? He said, <laughs> well, Philip, you better have a word from the Lord. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He's like, I don't think you're crazy, but you better have a word from the Lord. <laughs> so I believe I do. Yeah. Because I can see favor all around this and people yeah. gathering and even people have contacted me, businessmen have contacted me and said to me, Philip, we've been praying for this. We've been waiting for someone to come to Chicago and release a sound of praise. Praise God. I've been looking and finally. Wow. And so, as I said before, it's not me. No. It's the prayers that go before. Yes. That in the invisible, they make the invisible visible. Yeah. And it's just so powerful. You talked about a moment ago, the power of worship. Uh, there's something that worship can do that the spoken word can't do. And you've really experienced that a lot in your ministry. Touch on that a little bit about the power of worship. I mean, there's so much you could say, but worship breaks the atmosphere open. Mm. The reason why worship is so powerful, it's because it's melody 
but it's the word of God in melody. You see, a song from your mind that is just from you doesn't do anything. But when you speak the word of God in melody, then you're actually singing what heaven is singing. Mm. And then it brings the whole idea of, you know, God is giving you the keys to the kingdom. I believe that as you sing, you have the keys to the kingdom. I can remember one time I was singing Matthew 16, 18, and I began to sing it and sing it and sing it and sing it. And the previous person who was preaching, he had prayed for this lady and he had said, you know, you just receive your healing, you're walking, you were in a wheelchair, but you get up and you start walking, but she didn't have the strength really. Mm -hmm. She had received a little bit of her healing, but not completely. And he said, something's gonna happen, you're just gonna jump up and start running around all this, you know, this whole room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, how's that gonna happen? But then during the service, I felt a song Praise come God. out of me. And it was Praise Matthew 16, 18. Whatever you bind in heaven will be bound in earth. And I began singing that from the front row. I wasn't supposed to be singing, but I felt right. it. And that lady got up and started running around that auditorium. And I was like, whoa. Mm. Like, but that's the power of worship. Yeah. It takes the things that are impossible. Yes, it does. And it makes them possible. Yes, it does. Because it's not about what I'm going through. Yeah. It's about worship that is directed to Him. Yeah. And when you look at Him, you realize that all the issues around me are nothing yeah. in comparison to His grace, yeah. His power, His glory. Yeah. yeah. So that's so powerful. I know one thing about our audience. Uh, these are people of prayer. How can people be praying for you? What, what, can you? what can they pray for you concerning this event? Well, there's a scripture that's been on my heart and it's when Paul is being called into the city of Corinth. Mm -hmm. And God says to him, says, there are many people in this city. Do not be afraid to proclaim the gospel boldly. Yeah. Praise God. And so pray that we proclaim the gospel so boldly and pray that as musicians play, there are notes and there are frequencies that heal people. Pray that people don't just hear words in a song, mm -hmm. that they hear the word of God. Mm. Pray that just as Gideon, when he went into the city, yeah. he took down the idol. I believe that we're going into a city and we're taking down yeah, a principality and power. God. We're taking it down yeah. so that the victory can come. Praise God. Pray for that. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen, let's take about a minute. I'll let you pray uh, yeah. for this absolutely. because I know that this is something that's on your heart as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Father, we thank you for Philip. We thank you for the call of God. Thank you, Lord. Life. The call of God that he has responded to and answered and said, yes. So Lord, yes. we declare over that city of Chicago and Lord, yes. I even I even declare over future cities that you will pull him into, you will draw him to. That as the word goes forth, as the song goes forward from his lips, that bodies are healed, that lives are transformed, that souls are delivered. We declare the glory of God manifests in Chicago. Yes. We thank you for using Philip and his team yes. as willing vessels. We thank you, thank Lord, you, that the words, of their mouth are blessed. The work of their hand is blessed. That as they've been obedient to say yes and do what you've called them to do, Lord, that you go with them, you go before them, you come behind them, and that God yes. is glorified in everything in this yes. event. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Philip, thank you. Thank you for being obedient to God's calling, and thank you for being such a good friend to this ministry and this network. We love you, sir. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can connect with Philip by going to philiprenner.com, where I'm sure you can find out more information uh, about the event in Chicago. Uh, and uh, as we said, just pray. Pray for Philip and pray for what's going on there. Now, tomorrow night, America Stands, a special broadcast of America Stands tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. You want to make sure that you're here for that. GoVictory.com slash America Stands is the website. Tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, morning prayer, join us for that. And then again, back here tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern for Victory Update. We'll see you again tomorrow, everybody. And remember, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord.